Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about exponential functions and how they change over one unit on the x-axis. So if you're uh, working on IXL Algebra 1, CC7 exponential functions over unit intervals. So the first question says how does g of t equals 8 to the power of t change over the interval from 2 to 3? So if the change in like from 2 to 3 the change is one unit so that's what this assignment is about that ex uh, that that change over the x interval is going to be equal to 1 all the time which is going to make everything easier because in cc8 uh it's not necessarily one u one uh, difference on the x axis which could require uh, a little bit of a calculation to get to the answer but let me show you the uh, mindset behind this first I'm gonna do it by hand solve the question step by step and then I will show you uh, the shortcut to get the answer so it says how does the function changes uh, over well, from t equals 2 to 3 so what you can do is the actual work is basically calculating uh, g of 2 because the first value is 2 uh, plug in 2 for t it becomes 8 squared which is 64 and then g of 3 equals 8 cubed which is I don't know what that is but what it is is let me see 512 so the question is about the change from 64 to 512. It's not about the change from the smaller number to the bigger number. It is the, from the first number to the second number all the time. The first number could be bigger. That's not an issue. Just figure out what is going on. There is a multiplication relationship between those numbers. That's what you need to figure out. So am I multiplying this? I see what it is. It's multiplied by 8 that's going to be my answer so it is increasing because from 64 to 512 it is an increase by a factor of 8 because it's multiplied by 8 so this one says decreases decreases just get rid of those so I have two options one of them says so if I had this in the options uh, that would be my answer uh, increases by a factor of 8 that means increases by a factor of 8 means you can get your second number by multiplying it by 8 by multiplying the first number by 8 or by multiplying the first number by 8 squared or by 8 cubed but the base is gonna be 8 that's why it says by a factor of 8 so but that's not in the answer so you might feel like the answer is gonna be 800 but it is not so let me explain you using let me explain you why it is not by 800 by using a different set of numbers such as 1 and 8 same kind of relationship it is multiplied by 8 right so how much is the increase from the first one to the second one by a percentage so to find a percent value what you do is you subtract the numbers you have so for this you would do 8 minus 1 divided by the first number so divided by the first number so 7 divided by 1 is 7 so it would be uh, it would increase 7 times so that's gonna be 700 percent so this would be the answer or you can do the same thing using these two numbers now that you see what the concept is going to be 512 minus 64 divided by 64 is going to give you the same value 7 so it's gonna get 7 times bigger 7 times bigger is 700 percent increase so that would be our answer now let's move up a level or see the next question by the way that was uh, how you do it by hand step by step now this is going to be an increase and it is going to be by a factor of six now I, I'll show you the uh, shortcut so when you have a whole number 
in the base when you have a whole number in the base this is an increasing exponential function but increasing how so if your first number that you plug in is 1 and then if you plug in 2 the numbers that you plug in is increasing your answer is going to increase that means the function is increasing function look at the numbers you're plugging in the first one is 4 the second one is 5 so whatever the pattern in here if that pattern is increasing this is going to behave in the same way because you have a whole number in the base it's not like one-fifth one-third it's just a six so my x values or t values are increasing the numbers that I plug in so my answers the y values are going to increase as well so this is an increasing function that cannot be my answer cannot be the answer is it increasing by 500 percent or uh, is it increasing by six percent so like my original thinking is I always look for increasing by a factor of six because that's my base number so it's gonna increase like times six or times six squared or times six cubed or so and so so these are the numbers that you can multiply the first number to get the second number so that like all of these numbers are a factor of six because that's my base number so that's your how you can find your answer first thing look for increasing or decreasing by a factor of whatever your base value is so if you don't see that I don't see it it's not in here because increasing by six percent or by five hundred percent neither one of them are right uh, one of them is right so let's figure that one out so uh, be because of the same reasoning it is not going to be six hundred percent it is going to be five hundred percent you can consider the numbers as like one to six normally the pattern in here is like times six right but the increase is not six times it is increasing five times so how you find it six minus one divided by the original number so it is increasing five times that's why it is five hundred percent increase so when you have let's say your first number is uh, one hundred when you increase this uh, when you increase this five times that means adding another 500 in the end it is going to be equal to 600 that's just another example so that would be the second one check this one out increasing by a factor of 9 is what I'm looking for let's see if that's an option increasing by a factor of 9 it is an option so or increases by 800 uh, percent if that was in the options I could have picked that one as well the base number is 4 by a factor of 4 this is an increase because that's a number bigger than 1 increase by a factor of 4 is not an option but increases by 300 percent is my second option so now this is a decreasing function because it, it'll get smaller every time I increase that exponent instead of 5 if I plug in 6 the x values are increasing or the t values are increasing but the function is going to decrease because the base number is smaller and smaller and smaller when you plug in a bigger t value so now I'm looking for a decrease by a factor of 2 because that's the number that I have in the base or let's say by a factor of 2 was not an answer then you would look for decreases by 100 percent because remember whatever your number is by, by a factor of 2 subtract 1 uh, and then you would get 1 you you will have that many 100 uh, percent so this one here is decreases by a factor of 2 let's skip a level and see if the questions get any harder this one is uh, by a scale factor of seven it is decreasing that would be the answer let's skip a level okay now it looks a little more complicated but this is not going to change anything whether we plug in negative one or zero 
the two times is going to be there all the time. They will cancel each other out. The only thing that will change is the part that we plug in the number, the variable. Just look at that part. So our function is going to behave the same way as this one, 10 to the power of x. Just ignore the times 2. So by a scale factor of 10 or 900 percent, those are the things that I'm looking for, okay? By a scale factor of 10 or 900 percent. 10 minus 1 is 9, that many 100 is what you need. By a scale factor of 10 is like either the second one or third one. Is it increasing or decreasing? The base number is bigger than 1, it's increasing. So that would be my answer. Increases by a factor of 10. Moving on to this, it's an increase that's a bigger number than 1. It's either first, second, or fourth one. Uh, by a scale factor of 5 is my answer. Oh, that says decrease. But, okay, so I couldn't see that. By a scale factor of 5, increase. But I, I have this one. Increases by 400. So if you're dealing with percentage in the options, just subtract 1 from your base number, and then you'll see how many hundreds uh, you will have. Okay, uh, here is another question. So uh, this is going to be the last one. Uh, we have decimals this time. You can ignore that 3. Again, just ignore it because the change is going to come out of that point 0.8 to the power of x. So point 0.8 is smaller than 1. So that indicates a decrease. So this is not my answer. Decreases by 0.8, that indicates a linear function because if your no, the function is decreasing or e increasing by 5, by 3, by 0.7, by 0.8, that means it is going to increase or decrease in the same amount every time, which only happens if you have a linear function. So that's not the answer. So it's either the first one or the second one. So our answer is related to this number, but how is it related? So uh, if I need to get my second number by multiplying the first one by 0.8, it'll get smaller. So let's say your first number was 100. If you multiply this by 0.8, it becomes 80, right? How much is the decrease from 100 to 80? So the decrease is like 20. Out of 20, you're losing, uh, out of 100, you're losing 20. That means it is a decrease by 20%. So basically, whatever your base number, you got to do 1 minus that number. 0.20 is going to tell you how much decrease you have. Or let's say it was 1.35 to the power of x. This is an increase, and you do 1.35 minus 1 equals 0.35 that would be 35% increase. Keep that in mind in case you have a number that is greater than 1 in your base. So that was all for CC7 exponential functions over unit intervals. We learned how to decide the behavior of exponential functions in the unit interval when we increase or decrease the x value by only 1. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you in another video.